Right up. said hi everybody uh hi jan chris ricky eugene maravic jerome sheree and admir amanda peg dino karen Teresa, jenny juanita brian patty dustin welcome to all of you god bless you we're so happy to have you in our study let's get back into it we are in Genesis chapter 25 and verse 19. This is an interesting study, isn't it? I don't know if you guys enjoy these studies as much as I do. I do this before and after the show, too. I'm always studying, seems like so. Uh, this is my favorite thing to do, study the Word of God. Okay, let's get into chapter 25 of Genesis in verse 19. And these are the generations of Isaac. We just got finished looking at the generations of Ishmael. He had 12 sons like Jacob. Okay, Isaac only had two sons. But Ishmael had 12 sons as God promised to bless him. So as you can see, Ishmael's got a real big head start on how many descendants he's going to have. Compared to the Jews, Isaac... Uh, Ishmael has got way, way, way more descendants than Isaac does as far as Jews and Arabs go. In verse 19 of chapter 25, and these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old. Now this says Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to as his wife. So I guess he was 37 when his mother died and 40 when he married Rebecca. So Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebecca to wife, the daughter of Bethuel the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban the Syrian. Laban the Syrian. Syrian. Okay. In verse 21, and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. So Rebecca is barren like Sarah was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. She had twins in her womb. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. In verse 23, and the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Two different lineages. The, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger. In verse 24, so see her, she was told by the Lord that the younger, uh, the elder would serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment. 
and they called his name Esau. In verse 26, and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. So he married her at 40, but he was 60 before he, these twins were born. So for 20 years, Rebecca did not bear him any children. In verse 27, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. Notice, so was Cain, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. In verse 28, and Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. Now, that's an odd reason to love your son because he can cook you what you like to eat, isn't it? Rather than loving him just because he's your son. Uh, it says, Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. It's interesting, isn't it? But Rebecca loved Jacob. In verse 29, And Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. So Jacob is cooking some soup. And Esau came in from the field, and he was tired and hungry. In verse 30 in, of chapter 25 of Genesis. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? He's, he's saying, what? What good is my birthright to me if I stand here and die of starvation? He sounds like a drama queen, doesn't he? Could he was he really that hungry <laughs> that he thought he was going to die if he didn't get some of Jacob's soup? In verse 33, And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swear unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Now, keep in mind, Esau doesn't really think he's giving his birthright away. He's a liar, <laughs> okay? All he's doing is telling Jacob whatever Jacob wants to hear so he'll give him some soup. His God is his belly. And his birthright, he had no intention of parting with his birthright, but he was a liar. He lied to his brother Aban swore to him in a lie, saying, okay, you can have it. Just give me some soup. In verse 34, then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright, but he had no intention of giving it up. He just wanted to tell Jacob whatever it was he wanted to hear to get that soup out of him. And that identifies him as not having a temple inside him. He despised his birthright. His birthright was not important to him as the firstborn. He was the firstborn and therefore entitled by the world standards to the birthright, just like the world standards said that Ishmael was entitled to the birthright, but God said no. He wanted it to go to the secondborn. He's doing that again. He wants the birthright to go to the secondborn. We're going to go straight into chapter 26 and verse 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. This is another famine that came along. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, 
Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Now, did you hear that? And the Lord appeared unto him. This was not a voice he heard in a dream or a passing thought. This says the Lord appeared unto him. What a trip. In verse 3, sojourn in this land and I will be with thee and will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed. I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. In verse 4, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. In thy seed. He's talking about the king, Jesus Christ, who would eventually be born of this very special lineage. In ver verse 5, because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, she is my sister. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Abraham did that a couple of times. For he feared to say, she is my wife. Now, she wasn't his sister, but she was his cousin. Okay. Uh, she is my sister, for he feared to say, she is my wife. Lest, said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca, because she was fair to look upon. In verse 8, and it came to pass when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. They were laughing and playing, I guess. And uh, Anyway, verse 9, And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold of a surety, she is thy wife. And how saidest thou, she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, lest I die for her. In verse 10, And Abimelech said, What is this thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have, la have lain with thy wife, and thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. In verse 11, And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that toucheth this man or his wife, shall surely be put to death. In verse 12, Then Isaac sowed in that land, means he planted fields, and received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. In verse 13, And the man waxed great, and he went forward and grew until he became very great. In verse 14, for he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. Remember, Abraham was extremely wealthy of silver and gold and animals and servants and um, maidservants and men servants, and he had great wealth that he had accumulated that God had given him. And all of this went to Isaac. In verse 15, for all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. What is wrong with these people? The, you know, they are the uh, ancestors of the current Palestinians. <laughs> What's amazing is that when Israel handed over Gaza, when Ariel Sharon was the prime minister in 2005, it was a paradise. It was an oasis. It had thriving businesses, greenhouses, homes. Um, it, it was thriving. It was a paradise. And the Palestinians came in there and they just bulldozed it all to the ground. 
all of these, uh, all these businesses and homes and uh, greenhouses that the Jews had that were uh, forced to leave all of their livelihood and all their land uh, and leave Gaza. Uh, the Palestinians came in there and just bulldozed it all to the ground. That's ridiculous. Why didn't they just go in there, take over those businesses and make themselves flourish <laughs> with what the Jews had left behind? But they didn't. These Philistines are the same kind of mentality uh, and their descendants, these Palestinians, are the same. They shoot themselves in the foot. Now, what happened here is the Philistines... They came and they plugged these wells. Why in the world would they fill these wells up with earth instead of using them to irrigate the land and to plant and to grow things? Um, but they don't. They just shoot themselves in the foot. And they continue to do so. In verse 16, And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. So Abimelech is feeling threatened by Isaac and wants him to leave because he is mightier than King Abimelech and his people. In verse 17, And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. In verse 18, And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. What, what is wrong with somebody who takes a working well and fills it up when they need it? <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, chapter 26 of the book of Genesis and verse 19. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. In verse 20, And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. Doesn't that sound like your modern day Palestinians? They destroy everything, and then Israel comes in there, and they restore it, and then they're going, oh, no, that's ours. <laughs> and he called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. In verse 21, and they digged another well, and strove for that also. So they let them have it, and he went and digged another one, and then they wanted that one too. And he called the name of it Sitna in verse 22. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. So he gave them the first two wells that he dug because they wanted, they wanted them. And they wanted to strive with him over them. And so he left and digged another well. He gave them the first two. And then the third one, it says, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, for now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. In verse 23, and he went up from thence to Beersheba. In verse 24, and the Lord appeared unto him the same night. There he is again, appearing. The Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. See, Abraham is God's friend. In verse 25, and he builded an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants digged a well. In verse 26, Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar, and Ahu, 
Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Phicol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me and have sent me away from you? That's a good question, isn't he? He's saying, well, wait, I thought you sent me away, so why are you coming to me? In verse 28, and they said, we saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, let there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee. In verse 29 of Genesis 26, that thou wilt do us no hurt, as we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace, thou art now the blessed of the Lord. In verse 30, and he made them a feast, and they did eat and drink. In verse 31, and they rose up betimes in the morning, and swear one to another, and Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. They wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to come back and conquer them after they had sent him away. In verse 32, And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged and said unto him, We have found water. In verse 33, And he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba, unto this day in verse 34 and Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith the daughter of Beri the Hittite and Bashamath the daughter of Elon the Hittite so he took two Canaanite wives Esau did and they are ones without the temple born inside them in verse 35, which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah. They did not like Esau's Canaanite wives. In chapter 27, wow, actually, I'm a, we're about one minute from the break. So once we come back, we'll go into chapter 27. Um. Let me see if there's any questions over here. Hi, everybody on Facebook, uh, watching on Facebook. I'm looking to see if there are any questions. I don't see any. I'm so glad that all of you are here studying with me. This is fun for me. I mean, I, I hope it's fun for you, too. I love to learn the Word of God. Uh, let's go over here to YouTube. Hi, Kelly. Janine. Hey, Janine. How are you, sister? I love you. I always miss you when you're not around. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back after this. Don't go away.